I'm going to show you guys how I got this thing wired up 4085. Um, I went with the Siri Moto kit, um, even though it's for the uh, Civic Si. Pretty similar to the TSX. The only difference is um, it's not plug and play right at the sensor. So for Flash Pro on the TSX, um, the input for E85 that we're going to be using is the green wire uh, that is running into the lower radiator uh, temperature sensor. Um, it'd be this one right here. Um, it's the wire harness. I already got that cut and moved out of the way. Um, it's going to be the green wire and you select your ECT2 um, as your input for ethanol on Flash Pro. Um, this is for a turbo setup, so I'm running a return system. Um, if you're not planning on running a return system, you can uh, run your uh, E85 sensor instead of right here um, on the back firewall, uh, which is pretty easy. Um, I'm not going to be running too much in my actual fuel system. I've got a whole playlist on my channel dedicated to uh, several fuel system videos that I made, so... Go ahead and check those out, but let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so here's the uh, Siri Moto Flex Fuel Kit. Comes in a pretty neat package. Uh, this was actually packaged in another box, so pretty secure. I already got it open once uh, last night when it came in. Pretty nice little box. Uh, that's beside the point. But here are some of the fuel lines, and we will not be using these. Uh, this is for the Civic Si. What we're really after is all the other stuff. Comes with some brackets. And pretty much just a GM uh, E85 sensor. And this, I imagine, right here is going to be our gauge. Uh, and so it comes with a pod holder, which that's pretty neat. And it comes with the gauge, and it comes with a different faceplate. Sticker. Stickers are always nice. Alright, so to get started, um, I'm going to go ahead and start running this wire through the car. Um, this right here is what's going to go to the coolant, uh, coolant sensor uh, plug. Uh, this plug will, will not fit, um, so we're just going to cut it back and we're going to get that tapped into the uh, green wire. And then this right here this section uh, it's going to go on the uh, fuse panel that's under the dash on the inside uh, this this I think we're going to plug into the uh, fuel pump and uh, this obviously to a ground and then this little section right here is going to get routed up towards the uh, towards the gauge I'm not going to go into uh, detail on uh, how I ran my fuel lines. I'll drop a video down in the uh, description. Just mainly want to go over um, actually getting this thing wired up. So the kit does not include the um, quick connect fittings for your uh, uh, E85 sensor. Um, so depending on what you run, whether it's dash 6 or dash 8, that's up to you. But you're going to need to buy uh, your fittings. It's a 3 8 um, 3 8 quick connect and just get a you know a 6 or a 8 whatever size you want to run or a 10 I am going to be running this on my uh, return I'm coming right off of the fuel pressure regulator um, if you guys don't have a fuel pressure regulator installed um, you can just run this on your firewall running up to your uh, fuel rail um, but 100% any of your plastic lines your OEM plastic lines you're going to have to replace 100% um, I have a video of doing a complete return, ses uh, return system um, and then another video um, utilizing the uh, metal lines. So go ahead and check it out. 
and uh, make sure you get uh, E85 rated hose, um, whether you're replacing the entire thing or just the pieces on the fuel tank and uh, from the uh, metal line on the firewall going to the fuel rail. All right, so I got the fender off, uh, the side skirt just so I could uh, get that bottom bolt off for the uh, fender. And you pop this right here, this rubber piece, pop this grommet out as well. And uh, basically just fish, fish in a, a chunk of wire. I'm using a pretty thick gauge uh, copper wire, shoving it in there just so we can catch it on the other side. All right, so the wire's right here. Uh, tape up your uh, yellow wire, the one going to the uh, coolant center, and get that pulled through. Uh, once I pulled it through here, I uh, shoved it down into there and out this hole right here. And uh, I'm going to be using that grommet um, to carry this wire, hold that wire in place, and that's going to go um, kind of up along the frame over there. Uh, but now we got to do it reverse we got to pull from this way now we got to pull this end in uh, so we can have the plug for the uh, flex fuel sensor so it's a little messy here but we've got the um, fuse location right here I went with number two that's ignition coil um, and then the ground I just went uh, to one of these bolts on the hood latch anything that's going to ground out and that was the closest one I mean we're going to get this kind of bundled up I've got multiple wires some going up to the gauge and stuff um, I'm going to do a little bit of work here uh, make this look a little bit cleaner uh, but that's grounded out that's going to number two uh, that's ignition coil not the fuel pump and uh, obviously the yellow wire that's going through that grommet now out the top and then kind of just looped around right here um, I've got this wire that's going to be coming up going to the gauge um, and that's going to get hidden under this that's going to get hidden under this uh, rubber right here so I've got uh, this end plugged or run through the uh, grommet already um, the reason for that is because this clip right here the way I want to run it this isn't going to fit into there um, so I'm going to run it through the grommet first and uh, try to fish it up top right here. Oh, I got pretty fat fingers. There we go, we got it. I'll just take all the slack out that I need. Don't need much. Um, and now I'm gonna just tape this off to here. Uh, you wanna, you wanna make sure you're taping the crap out of the wire on the back side uh, really tight um, and then tape this real nice too because um, you don't want these connectors to rip off and we're going to try to make it kind of uh, a little uh, angled a little bit so it doesn't have any room or uh, hard angles to snag on anything something like that should work and uh, now we can pull it through and I'm just going to pull um, carefully making sure it's not snagging on anything um, I actually didn't realize um, how long that cable was coming off of the uh, gauge and uh, the two connectors actually come all the way down to here so I didn't need to drag that other wire up there uh, but I brought the two connectors down from there um, we got them zip tied right here and they're plugged in you've got your uh, sensor plugged in right there and then that's for the power and I just kind of started getting everything uh, routed around so we can get this plastic cover back in uh, just do your best whatever works get everything zip tied I'm up tight and looking pretty uh, this wire just sitting right behind between the uh, dashboard and uh, this metal part and this molding is holding in place um, it's actually pretty flush in there so we'll get this cover back on I'm not sure if the um, fuse cover is gonna go back on with this thing sticking out right here but uh, we'll find out here in a second so that was actually a really good fit um, everything closed up nice and neat um, nothing's bulging out I was able to get the uh, 
molding back into place and or the uh, weather strip whatever you want to call it uh, but yeah that's all all in there nice and pretty don't uh, mind the mess it's been like a year since this thing's been vacuumed but now we can get this grommet back in and we're gonna somehow run the wires kind of up through here I uh, don't want to get them next to uh, any of the pinch points uh, but we're trying to bring it somewhere up right here underneath we're gonna have the flex fuel sensor right here and then this is gonna be uh, the wire we tap into for the uh, input so I've got my flex fuel sensor installed um, it's kind of hovering up in the air right now a little cramped for space here uh, that's the uh, best spot I could find um, and I've got that plug already plugged in zip tied right here and it's coming down under right here with the uh, piping and uh, the plan is to kind of bring these up along right here um, secure them so we're not rubbing against no uh, sharp metal um, then this wiring down from the bottom I brought it out through that same hole I've got the wires disconnected right now uh, what I think I'm gonna do is uh, probably snip it about uh, an inch back or so maybe a little more um, kind of get this thing taped up or something so you can't see the wires sticking out and then just plug it back in um, and then we're gonna be tapping uh, tapping into here and we're just gonna end up hiding this splice um, kind of tucking everything up into here the fuel return is already installed um, it's tucked under there as well and then it shoots down and goes under the car um, and as you guys can see the uh, flex fuel sensor is sitting right on the uh, return side of the fuel pressure regulator so I um, actually soldered it instead of just using a crimp and then uh, threw a heat shrink on there. And then we're going to wrap this plastic tubing around it uh, just to kind of uh, keep it nice and safe from like weather and stuff. Um, also just using those crimps I wouldn't want it to vibrate loose and then uh, loose signal. Alright so here's the uh, finished result. I've got that going up around right here coming out going under the uh, TPMS sensor going up right here zip tied coming through that got another zip tie right here and then I've got it zip tied um, to the wire harness for the uh, headlight coming under right there it's up against that rubber hose so it's not going to be rubbing I um, actually might throw in one more zip tie right there so I don't have this loose wire <coughs> This wire right here, that's going down to the uh, temperature sensor or the radiator sensor. That'll probably get zip tied a little bit better as well. I've um, got the plug for that sensor coming in around right there. That's heading back in. So one thing I forgot to mention is those two wires, I ended up putting them into the plastic wire guard. Um, I don't know what you call it. It's that uh, ribbed stuff that's split in the middle. So I ran them through, zip tied them. Um, and that's pretty tight right there. It's not gonna cut through that metal having that uh, plastic piece there. So nice and secure All right, so I screwed up a little bit I told you guys that I'm gonna be using a uh, fuse location number two um, And that one apparently has power all the time. So I went ahead and put it into fuse 19 which is uh, for the fuel pump and uh, it works just fine I am going to hop into Flash Pro and see if I can't disable that sensor um, and m mark in the input for uh, E85 using the ECT2 uh, sensor to read. But if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with the computer or Flash Pro. Have a tuner come by and get all that figured out for you and then go uh, run some E85 and enjoy that crap. So overall, I would say this is a pretty simple install. Um, obviously, the kit I went with is the Sirimoto uh, 8th Gen Civic SI kit. Um, and it was like 480 bucks, so it's a little bit spendy. 
Um, I didn't use the hoses that came with it. And I'm not sure if you can uh, if you can get away using these um, on the stock car. Um, but if you're just planning on running E85 on a stock car, no turbo setup, um, you don't have a fuel return system, you can mount your sensor coming off of the uh, metal fuel line. You'll have to just get an adapter. And if you guys check out my uh, older video on my uh, fuel return system, um, I explain how to get the uh, fuel lines installed on that, what fitting you need and whatnot. Um, and you can just run your E85 sensor right there. Get, make sure you have E85 rated hose um, into your stock fuel rail and you're good to go.